All right, I want to give an updated video on how I set up new Roblox game projects. And uh, I've made a couple of these videos in the past, but I wanted to make an updated one since this has changed for me. And quite frankly, it changes pretty often, and I imagine it'll change in the future too. But I just want to show what I do. Um, again, this isn't perfect. Everyone's going to do this a little differently. That's fine. Uh, but maybe this will be helpful for some people out there. Um, so obviously, the first thing I would do is open up Roblox Studio, start a new place, get that going. And uh, I would immediately publish this to Roblox so it's in the cloud um, and synced up there. And that's kind of the very first thing to do, right? Um, now, I'm using my Aero Game Framework for all of my game projects right now. And so naturally, I would go through the uh, setup project or setup process for that. And so I'm going to show that right here. Uh, so this is the documentation for setting up the framework. So I'm getting, kind of going to just go through this really quickly. Uh, First and foremost, I'm using Visual Studio Code for all of the programming side of it. Uh, this is completely free. I highly recommend it. I use this within my professional job too, and it, it's a great tool. Um, and then within Visual Studio Code, there's a few extensions to get. Uh, one is obviously the game or game framework extension uh, that just gives us a better view, a better uh, tree view of the project. Kind of narrows down what we need to see and gets rid of what we don't need to see. Uh, and then we're using Roho in order to bridge between Visual Studio Code and Roblox Studio. And then there's a Visual Studio Code extension for Roho, uh, which just kind of simplifies it. Now, I believe this also can come with an installation of Roho to simplify it. Uh, I, I don't do that myself. And in fact, this is not working for me as of yesterday. I don't know why. So I'm not going to be using this extension in this example. I'm just going to be using the command line for Roho, but it's really, really simple regardless. Otherwise, uh, Lua Check is a static analyzer in Linter for Lua. Really useful tool. Highly recommend getting that. Um, unfortunately, it's kind of tricky to get set up. It's kind of a black hole because you, you first have to get uh, Lua Rocks installed, and that can be kind of tricky. But once you get Lua Rocks installed, it's really easy to get Lua Check going. Um, and then on top of that, we have VS Code Lua, which is the VS Code extension that uses Lua Check. So that's going to allow us to visualize kind of the linter results on screen while we're coding. The only thing that's not listed here that I use is another extension called uh, Lua Indent. And this kind of just fixes some of the indentation problems with Lua within the default editor. I don't know why it has problems, but this kind of fixes it. So not a very popular uh, um, extension, but I really, I really like it. OK, so how do I get a new project set up then? Make sure I have all this stuff, of course, I do. Um, so what it would look like again is going into Studio, opening up a new place, publishing it, and then coming into VS Code and creating a new project folder for the game. So I'm just going to call it Example, but usually I would name this the name of the game to some degree. And then open up the folder, and we kind of just have a blank slate right here. So I'm going to hit Control-Shift-P. And the error game firmware has an initialize command, so I'm going to go to that. And that's going to just throw in all the files that we need uh, to get going. Uh, so I don't really care about anything right here, right? This has a bunch of stuff here. I don't use this view, so I use the error game firmware explorer view here in order to write my code. And again, this just kind of narrows down, uh, limits your view of things that you need to see only. So that's how we get this stuff set up. Now, again, to bridge the two, we need to get Roho going. And so within Studio, there is a Roho uh, plugin that you can get from the, their website and it has a link to it. Um, and then we need Roho going within Visual Studio Code. So we need to do it from VS Code first. It's more of the server and Studio is more of the client. So if I open up the terminal, I can just type Roho serve. And just like that, it's going. And then I can jump over to Roblox Studio and kick. Uh, click connect and uh, notice I don't have HTTP <laughs> settings enabled so that's the next thing I need to do so I'll go to options turn on HTTP requests save it and connect again okay I only have to do that once that saves um, the setting will persist okay so now it's connected and if I go under uh, work my uh, Explorer here you'll see all of my files have come in just fine and what's nice is that now I don't have to touch this or Roho within here either. I can just start coding within here and my changes as soon as I save will be synced over to Studio. 
So nice and fast. Now the very last thing I want to talk about is Git. So I use GitHub private repositories to, um, you know, make sure I'm tracking all my changes within here. Now by default, uh, Airgame Framework does not pull in a Git uh, setup here, so I had to do it myself. But it's really simple. You just do Git init, and that's it. Um, now there's some other things you have to do to actually sync it up to a repository, but if you start a new blank repository in GitHub, it'll give you an easy guide as to how to set that up. And uh, from there, I would make sure to track all my changes. <laughs> Alright, and I think that's it.